Hello, hello. Welcome to the Knight's Arm. We are continuing our series as forming the Persian Empire as Armenia. Last episode I explained that we restarted essentially because of the new save and because of the update. So we're just running through. We still have an unpaused. Um, and we are getting through uh, these banners here that are very handy and help us stay a little bit more uh, organized in our kingdom. And we are a king. We are a monarchy, right? He is our ruler. Where is it? Government. Yeah, so we have a king. And now we get some fur traits. So we have nine martial and eight finesse. All right, as I was explaining last episode, our research efficiency is low, which is why we're getting this banner over here. So if I could just read what it says, it says the same thing that it says over here. Our citizens and nobles produce 5.76 research points each month. With an output of 69 each year and 589 integrated culture pops, we get an efficiency of 11% for our research. Okay, so I guess we need more citizens and more noblemen, essentially. Yeah, so if we get more of those in our kingdom, we can increase our efficiency. So there's really nothing we can do now. We have more trade routes, so we can go ahead and import some stuff. And now, obviously, certain uh, divisions of pops want certain things. So our nobles want us to import these things, and if they don't, they'll get they won't get happy. Um, so you can see here their happiness is actually low. There are nobles in this pops in Armoria who are below 50% happiness and therefore are contributing to the unrest with plus 0.12. And I believe my unrest is right here. Yeah. So I got to be careful with that. And in order for me to make them happy, I need to, um, you know, I'm not exactly sure how to make them happy, but assuming that I need to do what they want and, um, make sure I import whatever they want. So we'll go ahead and import some papyrus. We've got some tech investment, that's fine. So we'll do that. And it also costs us a bit to import them. All right, so let's import that. We're gonna become friends with Egypt, I think. I think we should ally ourselves with Egypt. Or should we ally ourselves with the Antigonid? Uh, will they accept an alliance? No. So I guess we'll improve opinion with them. So we can get this relationship up. Improve opinion will... It'll go plus 50. Alright, so I guess I gotta unpause and see how that works. Um, yeah, I definitely got to be careful over here because I'm definitely going to eat up a bunch of these on the coast over there. But again, I definitely want to expand southwards and hopefully they don't ally themselves with the Silicutes, but I think they tend to do. Uh, let's go back to our trade routes. Um, let's import some... Should we import, let's see, where's the papyrus? All right, so this is plus one. It doesn't tell me if I get a, another one, how much it'll, you know, what's the surplus? Oh no, so the surplus and the capital gives me the tech investment. So let's import it again. And then I get the civic tech investment boost. Uh, what else can I do? What does wood do? Wood gives me ship recruitment speed. I don't care about that. Uh, vegetables, grain, precious metals. Where are the precious metals? Grain is right here, so grain gives me some global monthly food modifier. Um, 
vegetables give me more slave move slaves cost so it costs me less to move slaves all right precious metals are right here so i get more citizen happiness i should probably go for this one so we'll also import from egypt and my citizens are yeah they're getting pretty so i got i got i just got to make sure my uh, noblemen stay happy and i have one more trade route what should that be Is this steep? Is this pronounced steep or step? I'm not sure. I'll just say step. Step horses. Huh. You know, I'm already getting the bonuses over here. I should probably import something new now. Leather. I should probably do this one. Light infantry defense. Yep, that sounds good. And we'll stay consistent or we'll import it from Egypt. Okay, we have pretender support, obviously. Um, if we go to our characters here. Or not our characters, our government. We have pretender support. Uh, Arts was supports Kosoro. So if I go to him, yep, I can demand support for my official heir, who is, I think, someone like my brother or something. Well, he's a member of the family, okay. Koster is also a member of the family. So the physician supports him, so he's, you know, a sort of a noble guy. Where's the physician? Yeah, this guy supports him. He likes me. We could pay two uh, tyranny so that we can get primary air attraction plus 50, so that'll make him um, demand support for me for sure. We'll just wait it out. And we can call down an omen, obviously, from this uh, mechanism here, which I'm still trying to grasp. Uh, this is the religion, so if I go here... Religion? Okay. So I have four different um, deities. So we have one of war, one of culture, one of economy, and one of fertility. Uh, each of these has their own holy site, so this one has the Shrine of Ibora, but that one is in Pontus over here, so that's over there. Uh, the Chaldi, um deity has the Temple of Armoria, which is in my capital. This is owned by me. And it has this altar over here which gives me some extra commerce value. Acquire treasures and place them in this holy site in order to grant bonuses to the entire province. So I have no treasures right now that I own. And then the number of altars that a holy site possesses is related to the city status of the territory. Maximum number of altars is three, which requires a metropolis. So this is, I think, this is a new mechanic, I'm not sure. I have uh, Shrashoa or Shrausha. Shraosha. Over here. They have no holy site. I can construct one. I need to find a suitable territory and select a dedicated uh, holy site interaction. We will be prompted with a list of pantheon deities which the site can be dedicated to. Okay. So I guess that's that. So I'm assuming these are... Uh, Pantheon. Yeah, so these are the Pantheon um, deities? Or, I'm sorry, these are the Pantheon deities. If I construct a holy site, I gotta make sure I link it to this, uh, the Srausha, so that I could so that it could be placed over here. Got it. 
Um, and obviously these are passive effects. And these are the active effects. So the passive effects are always um, effective. Or always in effect. And then we also have the Shrine of Ariza, which is over here. And it is owned by us. Great. And we have a altar in there, the statue of Anahit, which gives us some population growth local, which means that it's only in that province. But we do have some other ones, right? So we have like, for example, Liji over here, which is the holy site for Mir. Um, where is Mir? Oh, I can't see it. I guess that's the province name. And we have uh, Irubuni here. We also have our Taxata. And then we have Karchakapeyur. Yeah, so these are all in our realm. And then what I could do also is I could desecrate it. So I could remove it. The holy site will be destroyed. Um, goes, population happiness goes down. Caldic countries may take offense at this since the wagon belongs to the Caldic region. Okay. So I could switch these right here or other ones. Or other, uh, what are they called? Pantheons. But why would I want to do that? I guess it's to have a holy sign. So technically, I can do this one right here, the Zovinar, or the Zovinar, which does have a holy sign. Here, I have no holy sites. So this will give me some commerce income and some citizen output. But this is giving me tax. I think I'm better off with this national tax plus 10%. That's passive. Although that is an option. So this is what's this, the, you know, the reason why you want to replace a Pantheon is so that you can get one that has more, you know, more holy sites, for example. Or, or a benefit or an effect that you would prefer. Um... So this is my reliquary here, which does have some treasures that can be owned. So here's the Bronze Cauldron of Shivini, which is right here, Bronze Cauldron of Shivini. So, you know, I could, if I had more, I have five now, and those five are all attributed here. Now, something that I, I'm still a little bit confused on, why are these a level two and why, why is this a level one, for example? Yeah, you see, why is this a level 2 and this, you know, why is this level 1 and this is a level 2? Yeah, I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what these numbers here, uh, what their significance are. So over here is our stability, yep, we're at 15, we have omen power, um, and then we have uh, divine sacrifices. So if I'm low on stability, but I have some excess political influence, I can just click this button there. Okay, and if we look at our religion, we have... Our main state religion is Zoroastrian, but we, all, we have a huge portion of Caldics here. Yeah, that's very interesting. We have a huge portion of Caldics, but our main state religion is Zoroastrian. So we definitely want to get more of those there, which we'll need to find out later. So which one shall we choose? We shall choose the tax one, I think. Let's do this one. 
Although, never mind, we are already getting that benefit. And if I choose it, I'm going to get Civic Tech Investment, my uh, plus 3.58%, which I don't need. Let's do... Morale? Yeah, let's do that one. And then this is when we when it expires. All right, I think we're good to go. I don't know if I should end the episode here, just so that we'll have a clean start next episode. So I think we'll do that. So we'll do a clean start next episode. We'll see you guys um, once we unpause the game. And uh, thanks for watching.